la 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 la. So these are the aims. Oh no, you're going to get that again if I'm not careful. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So you have read this earlier in the week somewhere along the line, didn't you? You read this, you read this, you went, oh, let me make that. You read this. Description. Hello, my name's right. Now, that has a position. Did you notice it? Did you notice the... It's like the Da Vinci Code, innit? You start watching the Da Vinci Code and you start looking at the hero. I think it's Tom Hanks. Right? And he's a man, I mean, he was good on the island one as well. But he was even better in Da Vinci because what he was good in Da Vinci, of course, he could spot the signs and the symbols miles away. But imagine that's now a doctoral level. That's a level eight abstract. There's lots, lots of trouble by the end. Lots of trouble. The aim of this mass class is to explore the philosophical and positional issues within our research. Well, it's not within, it's on top of. I'm not an essentialist, I'm anti-essential. And you're going, I'm not what? Oh yeah, there's philosophical issues all through this. All through this. Within. The master class aims to consider the ways in which we are embedded. No, no, no. Embedded in our research. I'm not embedded in our research. The research is embeds me. I am trapped in language. And I'll prove it. Well, I can't prove it. You can't prove it, Dean, because you're not deductive. Oh, God. I've just broken all my alignment. What keeps me safe and what will keep you safe, I promise you, is just this sense. Getting to grips with this idea of there's some theory behind this. Now, guess what? You don't need to know any theory before starting. In fact, you don't even need to know it really to pass. But I tell you what, it doesn't have to make life a bit easier and it will help you. So let's carry on. We must also recognise, as if such a thing is possible, <laughs> that the claims we make as a result of our work is, should be are, influenced by who we are. Well, I'm not a who. I'm not a who are, I'm nothing but a doing. If I'm a social constructionist, that is. But if, if I'm a positivist, this is correct. This is a positivist assertion, which is going to be absolutely perfect if I'm going to do an experimental design in the social sciences, which is going to be difficult. Well, it isn't, because you'll come up with some sort of outcome, and we've had a century of modernism telling us that human beings are like this. And we're now rewriting it, revisiting a lot of that stuff, and saying, well, we're not like that, are we? I don't feel like that. The point being, I'm not going to labour it, that is full of position, right there. Everything is full of position. But it isn't full in itself. It's not a thing in itself. I have just brought something to bear on that. What have I brought to bear on that? Myself. I have brought my lens on that. And that's what I want you to be thinking about with your own work. That's the trick. If I'd have written that, it would have looked different. If you could have written that, we'd have looked at it should, but it would look should look different because it's theoretically positioned different. I'm sure I saw a Q word in there somewhere. Is there a Q word anywhere? Might have been on the web. Is the quite? Is, oh, it does! Look at that. For the rec, this is for the podcast. This is by acknowledging that any form of Qualitative inquiry. You're level eight. You are level eight. You will never say a Q word again. Promise me. Just can you all raise your right hand? I'm serious. Why wouldn't you use the Q word at level eight? Because you don't want to give any weakness away. Any weakness away. Theoretically and positional wise, that has no makes no sense. At other levels, maybe. It's, it's a good, nice form to learn about research, isn't it? But you start talking about quality and you're being vivid and you're going to get told off, I'd imagine. And there's a good reason for that. It's a form of data. It won't be anything to do with your methodology and it's nothing to do with your epistemological positioning. And your ontology isn't going to be much better either. 
Bear that one in mind. What? Only a level eight. Oh. You can see why you're level eighters. You and your level eight research are somewhere. Oh yeah. Form, function, time. And place. Aristotle got that all those years ago. We're catching up. But it is somewhere. You are somewhere. Otherwise, we don't exist. That's a philosophical condition. And I have some very straightforward claims about what this means. Whether you know it or not, your research has positions, plural. Many positions, because you will bring that to it. Position and subsequent alignment determines and constitutes your contribution. What is the purpose of level eight? To contribute and to be able to stand in front of peers and argue your point. Whether you're right or wrong, that don't matter. Can you argue that point? You bet your bottom dollar you're going to be able to do it. You haven't spent the last three and four years suffering the way you've been so <laughs> You haven't attended these seminars not to be able to give it some welly. So that's not going to be a bother. But we're going to start thinking about positioning now. It'll help you. It'll help you. If you're a social scientist. So I've got to check. Any non-social scientists in the room? Oh. That's surprising. No one working in a lab. No one's in a lab. Anyone working for petrol chemicals? No. That's surprising. Anyone working for, I don't know, uh, well, pharmacy, pharmacy? No. Bloody hell. That's really odd. You can see I'm going to get you later. Because if you're a social scientist, what's the role of social scientists? Probably human beings. Something to do with being human. You are researching at level eight something to do with being human. That's a position. I'm going to come back to that. Then your position unavoidably, is that spelled right? Unavoidably. Unavoidably includes a reflexive view. Is it an I? Is that right? You be cheeky, don't you be cheeky to me, you, I tell you, I'll, I'll get you up facing the wall. Uh, includes a reflexive you, who has big eyes with which to notice, amplify, and do something called detail. That's my three little clues to this thing, how do you do this positioning thing? But there is something in this, and there's a spelling mistake in the ref is there a spelling mistake in the reflexive do you reckon no. there ain't in there when was the last time you used the term reflexive <laughs> that, and you're going don't pick and you're going don't you pick on that don't you oh, I'm telling you. no i like you i'll tell you for one because you're gonna sh you're gonna show her up now in a minute any minute you're gonna sh and you're gonna go get me an a that's what's gonna happen there's no spelling mistake there, you know. And if you have never used that word and you're a social scientist at level A, I'm not going to say shame on you. I'm going to go, oh, you poor things. Because from now on, you're going to start using it. Remember the last time you used the word reflective? Oh, you, I, I told you about this earlier when you're out there. I said, all you're going to do is say yesterday. When did you last use the word? Yesterday. Yesterday. Brilliant. So yesterday, you always... We're always using this word. Why would you use the word reflective? What is reflection? You'd use it if what? If you were what? If you were a position. If you're a reflexive position, that starts to help steer everything about your work. And I'm going to go on to show you how. It isn't spelt wrong. See, Nicosia, it's not spelt wrong at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've only got the one weakness, I've got loads. Think about the rest of us who've got more than one. Right? Right, this is for my, when you're filling in my form. Yeah, there. Right. Any questions? Good. Let's move on. Okay, it's near enough what's on the board, actually, I think. To explore, we're going to have, a, we're starting to have a look. We're going to solicit just some tricks. Just a few tricks. I'm not going to labour the point. I have got a hot date tonight and I'm not going to be late. Uh, 
And then you are going to give me some feedback before you go. I'm going to find about five or ten minutes and you're going to go, you know the next thing I'm going to do, Dean? The next thing I'm going to do when I get home tonight is drink. He's <laughs> <laughs> open the bottle of wine and just drink the lot. Thanks, Dean. You've been brilliant. That's what. Uh, but you are going to tell me one thing you're going to do before you go. Okay. Positioning is about philosophy. Alignment is about you. And if it's about you, it's about your reflexive connection with what? Your thesis. What is your thesis? Your thesis is your argument. Your argument starts somewhere, probably at the beginning, and it ends somewhere, probably at hand in. But there's no doubt, and it is my contention, and that in order to have position and alignment, you have to have that confidence in writing that's going to drag you from beginning and end in one straight line so there is less faults as possible for an examiner to pick on. That's really what we're saying. And that you have a position probably already in your writing. I can guarantee you it's probably positivist. Even though it, you really don't want it to be probably, but you, it's struggling, it's difficult. But you can bring any position to bear upon your work, and the earlier you get your position, it just gives you more choice. Oh, well. So, this is where I'm going to do a bit of picking on, and then I can start to work out how I'm going to tell you what it is and what you're going to do about it. You, you, yeah, you start at the front, never sit at the front. Oh, no. <laughs> Go on then, what are you? Oh, oh, shall we? I'll oh, be nice. We'll be nice. What do we think we are? But we're, we're, but we're open to criticism. <laughs> okay. Come on. What do you reckon you are? I don't know what the question is. What's your position? Positionality now. Say you're in Viva right now, and you're being I'm quizzed. Not, I haven't even started any doctoral studies yet. You can't say you're at Viva. You can't say that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I've read through your thesis, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, where would you say your positioning is? Go on, have a guess. Just, just help, help me out, it's a tough audience. I don't know, probably... I think it, given what I'm thinking of doing, which is more piece of research rather yeah. than thesis, it would be some insider research. Okay. That's all I know about positioning. Okay, thank you, that's, that's cool. Left or right? Just say left or right. Left or right. No, just one. <laughs> level left, eight. I level eight. Le left hand is good. Queen Victoria was left handed. So was Kurt Cobain. And so was Paul McCartney. That's got to be good. Queen Victoria. Follow that. Yeah, I don't know either. Okay. If you had to have a guess. No, I, I really, and I think that's why I came here. Okay. <laughs> um, so if you left here today having and I asked you the same question, you could go, you know what, I am, I'm this. Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, okay. Uh, Mrs. Cameron, <laughs> what would you say you are? Well, I'm uh, <coughs> halfway through our my PhD, and I'm working with actor network theory. That has a very, not, not straightforward, but um, strong positioning in terms of being be a constructionist. Okay, social constructionism of some sort. Well, he would say composite. Composite, and that that's a positional but it's, position. Yeah. So isn't it's it? certainly not a constructionist, but maybe it's a. That's the thing about this sort of stuff, because easier. as soon, if you can imagine, positions a triangle. The closer you get to the top, the more specific detail gets. So you'll get, uh, you'll get two philosophers who will be at the top of this going, yes, but you don't understand this unless there are conditions of ontology. Hello. You don't need to know that much about positionality to do a good piece of research. In fact, let's face it, you don't even need to know any positionality to do a good piece of research. There's no doubt about that. It just makes it a bit more doable and a bit more enjoyable and maybe gives you a bit more options. So when we, you're now, so I'm sort of saying, no, it's construction. You go, no, it's actually composite. That shows where position out, because there is a radical difference between the two. 
and but if you if you're at that point then where you're needing that positionality you've probably done your doctorate and you're probably well onto your fourth book when you're arguing those points but and that's working out for you though in terms of so you've got a sense of position and is that how in what ways has that helped you uh, at this stage it uh, it's not making sure that it's a uh, it's aligned and that's the aligned and that's okay. the difficulty so that's the uh, writing and the confidence and feeling scared every time you open the draft uh, and just being able to spot what you had at the very beginning in this abstract or couple of sentences that every single word becomes every a single word this becomes a bear trap that you are a composition and, and another thing that whether your writing reflects it or not yeah it's tricky it's tricky isn't it? it's tricky it's tricky stuff bear in mind you're all in the same boat though and and so there is a sort of brilliance about that if you just knew 50 percent about your positionality and you cock some of it up guess what it would make for a strong thesis so it's not it's not either or the, the more you, the more you get into it the better you can work it the better it's just going to be for your work but more importantly you might just enjoy it a bit more instead of going oh, i hate this i can't wait to get it done which is where you should be if you're sensible <laughs> just get it out there.